Hey folks and welcome back to the channel for another update on the development of Project Zomboid. We were very lucky to get a pretty big Thursdoid update recently so I'll be doing my usual and covering what was in that post for you guys. If you find the video useful or get some information you didn't know before consider dropping it a like to help out the channel or subscribing for more Project Zomboid videos just like this one. So the developers start this update with a bit of an apology message to those users on Linux at the moment. 40 1.73 came with crashes on Linux based servers and unfortunately the intended fix for this issue in 41.74 turned out to bring as many issues as it was meant to solve. The team are currently working on another approach that will be going into the unstable beta and then the stable branch as soon as they can and there's more details on this in the blog post which is as always linked in the description if you're a Linux user that has been affected and want to give it a read. Moving on from the issue issues though I'm going to jump forward a bit to this update's biggest announcement and that's a map expansion. Now whilst many had already found there was evidence of the developers working on some other areas of the map and extending the map boundaries this blog post gives us a few more details about what we can expect as part of the confirmed map extension. It's also said that this map extension is expected for build 42 which is shaping up to be an incredibly content rich update at this rate. The team provided us this image explaining that they are essentially looking to expand in all directions except north on the other side of the Ohio River boundary. The map team are returning to fictionalized versions of real places on the Kentucky map, Riverside and March Ridge being entirely fictional. They don't want to name exactly which towns but they do mention that one of them will be Ekron. In fact they then follow this up to say that the location on the map currently known as Ekron within the community is not supposed to be their version of this place at all and is actually known internally as Phallus Lake due to well yeah. The devs then follow up to say they are planning on erecting pun intended a sign in build 42 to make this more obvious. We're then shown some work in progress screenshots of some of the future locations coming to Kentucky. So a pretty big announcement as far as things go and like I said earlier build 42 is shaping up to be absolutely stacked with content at this rate. Now let's not forget that we've also got various animal AI being implemented and animal husbandry to go with it. Which leads me into the next section of the dev blog which actually touches on some more features coming along in regards to animals amongst other things. Firstly RJ is experimenting with the implementation of rats which the devs say could also become parts of Project Zomboid alongside the implementation of animals. I'm actually interested to see what kind of part these animals would play in Project Zomboid. Obviously right now we can include them as part of trapping, but with the implementation of a physical representation of the animal, could they be carriers of disease? Perhaps give us a reason to keep our bases clean? And maybe, just maybe, a little hint towards how the outbreak started? Anyway, regardless of what the rats bring with them, we're also seeing some further development on animal husbandry, which has been from Martin, who is working on animal transportation. The developers mentioned new trailers and potentially new vehicles which are most likely there to allow us to transport animals from other locations when we first capture them or decide to move bases. I look forward to seeing more details on that in the future blogs but as of right now we don't have any confirmation or imagery yet. Now if you're a fan of all things world building, Pat Bren has been working away at expanding on the current selection with regards to radio channels and TV channels at the start of the outbreak. More intriguing though, he started to work on some frequencies that players might be able to discover later on in the timeline of the Nox event. Now this has always been something I've wanted, a pirate radio station speculating about events, broadcasting music, it just adds a really nice world feel to games. Excited to see what comes of this one, definitely. And on the side of television, he's added public access TV, a music channel, a sports channel, a movie channel, a new entertainment channel, and a radio station called Upper South Radio to go 
go with all of that. Lastly, there's a smaller update currently in the works from the dev team at the moment. There's a couple of paragraphs on this blog post if you want to read them in full, but I figure I better sum up the main points. The team are currently testing many and various visual issues with the cutaway system, colorblind accessibility options, better crate highlights, many recipe improvements, better ways for the game to handle car alarms, and hopefully fixes for sounds cutting out in busy multiplayer situations. They do mention also there's a lot more than this, but the idea is none of these features will be revolutionary, but still something of interest for us. Now that's it for me in this one, but as always, do let me know in the comments what you're looking forward to, and feel free to speculate about some features coming up too. Some of the background footage in this video was taken from our Patreon whitelisted server, currently running a stalker-themed wipe, including several of our own commissioned mods made entirely from scratch. So if you want to join us, there's a link in the description for that too. A very special thank you to all of my existing patrons who are part of said server and support what I do. See you all in the next one.